Welcome to Life with Legends. I'm Justin Bell, and this week I am sitting down with Stefan Johansson. Stefan is a pretty interesting chap, not just for the fact that he started 79 Formula One races in his career, racing for both from McLaren and Ferrari, as well as winning the Le Mans 24 hours in 1997. No, not just the racing, it's also because he stayed current for over 40 years, even racing right up until recently and staying relevant the whole time. Nowadays, he puts his experience to managing some of the world's top drivers, as well as developing his work as an artist, where he draws on inspiration from personal experiences in the world of racing. I've seen them. They're large scale, they're magnificent, they're impressive, and I got to see them down at his incredible studio in Santa Monica in California. What a life, racing for Formula One and now an artist. Lots to like and lots to talk about with Stephanie Hansen. Well, first of all, I can't believe that I'm here. I can't believe I've never been here before. Yeah. It's yeah. Unbelievable. For some reason, I thought you came some years ago. No, no. Must have been Justina. Uh, must have been, yeah. <laughs> must have been Justina. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. you know, it's, it was... I always think to myself, one of the things, you know when you read an obituary on someone, you go, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Right? You know, you get the BRDC. Do you, mm -hmm. you're on the BRDC, right? Aren't you? No, no I'm you not actually. Yeah, I, I, I should be. I, I, you should be actually. Yeah, yeah. I've never really bothered with any of those, you know, members. But uh, yeah, BRDC would be British Racing Drivers yeah. Club. Nice thing to. It's like it doesn't. I do there. It's a hundred pounds a year to be there. Yeah. Overseas, because I haven't been to the British Grand Prix. And... I've applied for the RIC. Oh, that'd be. Good. I did that event over there a couple, yeah. you know, a few weeks ago yeah. with the with the art thing they do every year. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, the, I mean, that building, the whole setup there is just, amazing. It's so nice. It's so, fantastic. So, I mean, yeah. I remember the, back in the day, you it was really posh together, right? mm. really formal. Yeah. And so I was living in London. I'd somehow managed to get that RAC membership. Yeah. And I mean, like, it wasn't very expensive, but you could go to the club. Yeah. But you had to wear a tie to go in. And how many 25-year-old <laughs> you know boys are yeah. walking around London in a yeah. tie? Yeah. So I'd do this. In the winter, it was fine because you could have like an overcoat on, right? right, right. Or a jacket. And you go, ah, you know. Yeah. But when you walked in as just like a grotty little British yeah. schoolboy, effectively, they would they would hand you a grubby old tie, <laughs> like, like something that <laughs> some dead man uh, had left in yeah. his locker. And yeah, you'd, you'd yeah. go and uh, no, it is that swimming pool. That, yeah, you know, you go in there. It's so unbelievable. Yeah. Dad actually last year, two years ago, last time I was actually in England, he um, he had a dinner for Jackie Stewart's birthday, right. and of course, being Jackie Stewart, you know, the Queen was coming oh, right. for lunch yeah, at the RAC. Yeah. I don't think that happens to the rest of us, but you know, doing Jackie and I'm um, I dropped Dad off, and then I, you know, the doors close and he goes inside, and I go across. The, to some Lebanese coffee place across the street, you know, yeah. and I'm sitting there going, pissing with rain, and he said, my dad's about to have lunch with the queen, and, and I'm stuck in the peeing rain having <laughs> a coffee. See, that kind of sums it up, yeah. really, but, no, it's good, yeah. Anyway, the, BR, the, you know, the BRDC thing, that you get these emails, mm. and it'll tell you, unfortunately, you know, Tony Dron just passed away, or yeah. you know, any yeah, of these Barry right. Williams, yeah. or whoever, and you'll read it, and you'll go, God, I wish I'd talked to them about it, mm, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you find out so much about people after they go, Yeah. so I'm trying to do it in advance. Yeah, well, thank you, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. So after yeah. this, after this is up to you, you can yeah. do what you want, you can, you can, exactly. you can stay or go, but yeah. shit. I, so yes, one of the reasons I said that was, so last night I'm just online, looking, you know, checking into your past and stuff, because I'm like, God, I mean, I know your racing history a bit, but I had no connection to how your racing history ended up with you having this art, yeah. you know, and that side of it. And uh, when you read the, your racing past, it's, there's a, something you say on your website about your art and it's like your life before, yeah. the life that you used to have. Memories of a past Memories life. Memories of a past yeah. life. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, I, and it really came across that where I was thinking, God, 79 Grand Prix, 12 podiums, that's a, pretty freaking good isn't it yeah if well, you look back on it it's decent <laughs> it's decent I mean, yeah. you were up against I mean, some pretty you know, everybody you were, wants more of course you know but you were up uh, against yeah. some big yeah. boys though weren't you 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a good period because there yeah. was some pretty strong drivers back then as well, of course. Yeah, definitely. I think um, when I saw the picture of you in that, you know, that Ferrari, like 86, wasn't it? 86, 85, 85, 86, 86. yeah. 86. Because that car you see, I think, at various concourse, you know, you see that model Ferrari right. a couple of times, and I think once with your name on. And you, it arguably maybe the prettiest Formula One era. Yeah. Era. Don't you think? You look I, like I you think so, yeah. That high really, nose coming yeah. down and. Clean, very clean design, yeah. It's, yeah. I, really, I agree with that, yeah. And the sure. Ferrari red. So talk about it. What was it like for you when you got that call up to go to Ferrari? As a driver, I mean, you're like, I'm done now, right? Yeah, I mean, it was bizarre, you know. I mean, it's like you, you know, you spend your whole life at sort of trying to create the opportunities, you know, and you get, of course, I think it's the same for anyone, whatever you set out to do, like, there's more setbacks than there are success in the beginning, you know, and then all of a sudden, it just literally overnight, everything changes, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I got the call. After the Brazilian Grand Prix in '85, which I was just standing in for Balov in the Tyrrell, um, I was supposed to be driving for Tolman, but I, you probably don't remember. But Tolman, there was some political issues with the tires, so they didn't have any tires, so we couldn't race. So I was there just kind of freelancing, you know, yeah. and, and just miraculously my helmet bag was, was already in cheap. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always travel with this. <laughs> <laughs> Every driver exactly. does it, but we pretend oh, yeah. we're not yeah. doing it. I would never turn up and say, no. turn it with my helmet. What kind of a more yeah. am I? <laughs> exactly. So anyway, so Ken literally came up to me half an hour before the first practice. Do you have your gear here? And I said, sure I do. <laughs> so, all right, get in the car. Because yeah. I had a seat already, because I did some races okay. from the year before. Yeah. So anyway, so, so I did that race, flew back to London, where I lived at the time. And uh, Marco Piccinini called me who was the team manager yeah. of Ferrari at the time, uh, out of the blue, and this is on the Tuesday, I think. And he said, uh, are you in London? I said, yeah, do, can you come over to the Savoy? Uh, and we'd like to have a meeting with you. I'm like, sure. So, so I went over there. So we, we did, I chatted a little bit on and off yeah. over the years, you know, because, um, and there was maybe a discussion about doing a test or something at some point, you know. Anyway, so we sat down and he said, um, well, we'd like to hire you for the rest of the season. Are you available? And I said, well, I'm not really available because I have a contract with Tolman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but of course we don't have the tires and everything. So I have to check with Alex Hawkridge, you know, who's the, the, the team owner. And um, so I did that and he, yeah, he said, look, I'm not going to stop you if, you, if you get this opportunity, of course, you know. So, so we basically worked out the very basics, you know, flew down to Maranello um, on the Tuesday night, met the old man at the old factory in Modena, not in Maranello, yeah. which was, I mean, dormant, there was nothing yeah. there. Wow. And uh, had a five minute conversation, you know, and uh, then off to the factory, did a ba very basic seat, I had to use yeah. Michaela's seat, Alberetta's seat. And, and then I did about five laps sizes. around Fiorano on on Wednesday, and then we flew to Portugal on Thursday. <laughs> that was my first first Grand Prix with them. So it all happened literally in a couple of days, you know. Yeah, and then everything changed. I mean, then my whole life was whole changed life. from that moment, you know. Of course. I, interesting looking at that. It's a picture over there of uh, Enzo and. Mm. Funny when I read about, I was reading the words on your website about that picture, and it, you picked the right words because the words in that print with these, with these words, they're harder words, right? They're yeah. more, they're more violent words. That you know, you have love and things in other ones, but that the one with him is, is yeah. edgy. And I, I kind of do. I, that's why I try. So all these paintings I do of the portraits, which have a quote from yeah. the subject on the on the portrait, is yeah. to try to bring you know, sort of a, a strong statement or a meaning or something yeah. that, so in, in Enzo's case, I think it's, you know, sort of pulling away from the stereotype that you often get as a yeah. famous person, you know, oh, he's so-and-so, totally. -so. but this is such a dark and depressing oh. and really kind of, you know, but it obviously means that he's thinking about things that's nothing to yeah. do with how to make a race car go yeah. fast, yeah. you know, or all these things that you automatically assume is just, who that person is, you know, and 
I think we're like we, we chatted before, you know, I mean, everybody's different and there's so many layers yeah. to every person that you don't even know about, you know. And, and his was obviously deep as the Atlantic, wasn't it? I mean, he, that whole thing about how he treated drivers and mm. whether they were disposable, but didn't go to the tracks because some people say mm. he just didn't want to be that close to the, yeah. to, you know, the, the danger side of it. But like when dad met it, he said it was really like a movie, right? It's almost backlit coming through the door with it's the, exactly with the it was it's like the Fellini movie you know you walk through this corridor and like the sunlight's coming in from the side yeah. you know sun's going down you're like did he rehearse and, this yeah <laughs> exactly he sits there and all you can see is his silhouette because there's no light on you know and and you know it's like I mean it's literally like something out yeah. of a movie you know you speak Italian a little bit I mean I speak better now than I did when I was would there would it have been so. an advantage to have spoke better uh to some degree it could have been you know but mostly only from the political point of view yeah, I think, sure. you know because uh, Harvey was there you know and uh, I mean they all spoke English you know but I always knew that you know when, especially Michele you know I mean we were good mates but you know there's always the it's a little so bit every time they were talking about me it was a little beyond though so I knew exactly okay now they're talking about me yeah. again <laughs> and, you're like, I just, and you just sit there going <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, they were exactly, saying, yeah, you're like, yeah. yeah. I had that yeah. when I was with Erika. They spoke in French, and my French is okay. Yeah. But then when they got, they 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 take it into more like uh, parochial sort of French, or you know, yeah. and they would talk faster, and they'd yeah. name a car, but like, I know they're talking about something, or yeah, like, yeah, know, yeah. freaking car or me. Yeah. Uh, no, but what a thing that you could, you know, all the Ferrari stuff you do, right? All the you know, I know you involve a Ferrari. Yeah. So to have been one of the people that actually physically met him to drive mm. with him does put you into a different category because there's some of those owners and collectors would give their right nut, wouldn't yeah. they, for that yeah. moment of being with Enzo. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it was almost every day, you know, because back then you were, you tested almost every day in yeah. between. I mean, we, I was down at, you know, Fiorano pounding around, round, round for three, four days at a time sometimes, you know. And we used to have lunch every day yeah. at his house at the track there. Wow. And he, you know, he loved holding court, you know, and winding Piccinini up, you know, and uh, yeah. it, was, it was great times, you know, it's very amazing. funny. What is something you think that people don't know about him? Well, I mean, he, for me, more than anything, he was a much warmer person than I think people think he was, you know. I mean, right. he was very gentle, very kind, and a phenomenal sense of humor. Really? I mean, like yeah. great sense of humor, which is actually a quality I've found kind of common with. I mean, I've met that many successful people, but the ones I've met all have a really great sense yeah. of humor, and uh, he definitely did. You know, he he we I mean, we used to have so many good laughs and That's just great. you know, and good yeah, food about good everything. Food. food, of course, was brilliant. You know, and and because he did like his girls, didn't he? He was quite was well. He used to tell all the stories when he was young, you know, and Piccinini okay. had to do all the translations. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, Chinese yeah. Yeah. and then Mr. Ferrari proceeded to bare her breasts, <laughs> you know, it's like, of course he's, he's saying you know, I got a tits out. <laughs> very religious, you know, into the Vatican and all this, and they did it just as widen him up, you know, you could tell he was yeah. sort of, you know, the, the thing that was, hysterical. Was yeah, yeah, because yeah. he probably was like that. <laughs> do you think if you'd, um, if you had won that San Marino Grand Prix, think about that. that would yeah. Be, when you saw Senna's car run out, did you just, were you inside, were you like, fucking ace? I mean, this is yeah. my race. I mean, I th Which it, lasted you about two kilometers, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, you'd, I mean, I, if I ever drove the perfect race, that would, that would have been the one, you know, because I knew exactly what the fuel, what I needed to do with the window I had to stay yeah. in. And I stayed in that window the whole, from the very first lap. So I never tried to push harder than I need. I stayed consistent. Yeah. The car was super fast because I, I, what happened in qualifying, we were quickest in the, in the first practice, you know, before yeah. qualifying. Yeah. And then the car was just undrivable in qualifying. It turned out the floor was loose. So, so, forgotten to, yeah, uh, so the car was just all over the place. It was yeah. under, I mean, it was just no yeah. consistency in the car at all. And uh, so the car was super fast. I knew that already, you know, and it was just dialed in and I just stayed in the window, stayed in the window, you know, and they were hanging out the side, more boost, you know, so I'm, I'm good. Because no, I could see, I mean, you know, like when you drive, yeah, your yeah. brain is like a everything. computer, you calculate everything, yeah. you knew exactly what's going on, you know. And so I knew I was in good shape. 
till the end, you know, and then the thing runs out, like with half a lap to go. And what happened was there was a little crack in the inlet manifold, yeah. so it was sucking in air. So. And then, you know, the, the mixture so you, so you compensated for that. What you were seeing as a fuel... Yeah, so the, the mixture then compensated, so it was pushing way more fuel in than it needed. And, and that's why it ran out, you know, we found out afterwards, obviously, but... Yeah, but I think, like you said, I think it would have changed the dynamic massively. You to know, be a because, winner for Ferrari is... Well, if I'd won that, and then I should have won Montreal, because mm -hmm. I then stayed behind Michele yeah. with team orders, and I should have won Detroit. So maybe the which team orders great. wouldn't have been So there. it would have been, that would have actually put me in the lead of the championship. Yeah. Then that would have changed the dynamic completely, not only within the team, but also in my own yeah, mind, you know. Because the first one is always the hardest, yeah. you know, as so you know, I mean, win, whatever you do. To win in red yeah, would be... But that would have given the whole different uh, dynamic to everything, you know. I was reading that they said that Murray Walker and James Hunt were like, they kept the wrong guy at the end of the mm. year. You know, did you have that feeling that you... Well, you, I mean, I obviously did because, uh, it, but, you know, I mean, my focus in 86 was mainly to beat Michaela because that's the only thing we could do because the car... Unfortunately, yeah. the 86 car, you know, wasn't a great car, you yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. It was, the only focus was really to do that, and I did, you know, so yeah. I was fifth and he was seventh, I think, in the championship. And, uh, amazing, and, uh, really. and but, you know, I mean, hey. politics, there was always a lot of politics yeah. there, of course, you know, and uh, do you, it is what it is. You know, when you look back at your, any of us that look back at career, your career, obviously, that cemented it doing Formula One, anyone's driven mm. Formula One, it sort of gives them a a crown, doesn't it? Yeah. That no one else really has. But I often think there's always someone that helps you, and there's always a moment that makes you or breaks you. Yeah. Right. There's for sure there's the someone that helped you, and then there's that moment which could have could have made you or break you. you yeah. Know, when, at, in those in Formula One, but who was the person that helped you? Who was your? Well, I mean, I, I mean, it goes in stages, doesn't yeah. it? You know, in the very early days, it was my dad and a group of friends really in the town yeah. I grew up you know who kind of gathered together whatever they yeah, could yeah. scramble you know enough to get me to England yeah and kind of show what I could do you know so that was that the Formula first Ford that, win was big yeah at that point to win in Formula Ford is well big. Formula Ford I never I only did a very few races oh, okay. in Formula Ford F3 you know I won the F3 championship oh yeah F3 sorry. yeah yeah, yeah so that cool. obviously then you know yeah. then and you know and from that moment on it was really John Hogan who was the boss of Philip Morris, you yeah, know, motorsport, yeah. who really, you know, he helped me tremendously, not just in the way of with sponsorship and, but also, you know, just from a human standpoint, okay, yeah. point, you know, I mean, it was, I went through this period in F3 there where I was like desperate, you know, like yeah. just overdriving, you know, and really trying too hard, you know, and he, he took me to dinner one night and he, and he just said, look, you don't need to win every battle to win the war. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's always stuck in my mind, yeah. you know, and, and it's so true, you know. Yeah. I think there's a few others I could think of right now that might, <laughs> might benefit I mean, from that as well. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you, I, I mean, by the time yeah. people listen to this, it, the, the F1 championship we decided, um, so we'll have the benefit of hindsight. But that Grand Prix on Sunday, I am just going, I mean, I am standing up. I don't know about you, I'm, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. just... I mean, it's out just, of control. I mean, they lost the grip on it, unfortunately, you know. I yeah. mean, it should never be allowed, no. you know, at any level. I mean... For, 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 for you, Lewis you, and Max yeah. to be doing the things they're doing to each other, it's like that, as a driver, you have to have that... To stop chaos yeah. and mayhem, you have to have that some... Ba boundaries, right? Yeah. They've not crossed. They've gone past that. Well, I, I mean, I, I admire both of them yeah. hugely. I mean, obviously, you know, on a different league to the rest. But I, I think lately, had Lewis not backed off, obviously they would have crashed every race. Yeah. That's the only. There's, right. Those are the only options. Yeah, yeah. You know, and but I think the bottom line. I mean, there's a couple of factors I think that really makes this what it is today it's first of all it's the tracks they got to figure out what to yeah. do with the racetracks yeah. i mean you know to have the sort of two football fields a runoff area 
Or none, with no like fun. last weekend. Yeah. Or literally, like, I mean, yeah. I've never seen a track like that. Have you, other than the I street mean, track? How, street how track. that passed to be allowed to race on, I, I don't understand. Because, I mean, normally, the modern tracks, if they're built, they're so, the restrictions are so high yeah. on, on the runoff area and everything. And here we have, all of a sudden, like, one of the fastest tracks on the calendar with just barriers. I mean, I mean it's like, sil it's like now, Silverstone pretty. with freaking barriers all the way around. And blind corners everywhere. Miles I mean. now blind. If yeah. there was an accident, I, I, I said uh, to myself, if, if there's a biggie, this oh, could be I mean, one of the biggest monstrous, yeah. monstrous accidents yeah. In, yeah. in history. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree did, more. You know. I was thinking, though, with... Uh, I mean, it's rather like when Max came... When Max was slowing down, you know, he got the message. It turns out Lewis didn't get the message that he was going to let him by at that point. And I think Lewis doesn't trust anything Max is doing, right? So, yeah. well, it, I mean, it just quite rightly, because yeah. it seems... Yeah. But when, when he hits him in the back, you're just going, what is this? this yeah. Like well, he, I mean, obviously no one does that on purpose. No, he got no, caught out, no, you know, caught out. whatever happened. But, I mean, again, you know, I mean, I think race control has just completely lost yeah. the handle of the whole situation completely i mean to whatever okay so they this is how i see it they told max to let lewis by right but of course he's going to wait i mean you could tell i mean it was like clear as daylight he waits <laughs> until the perfect spot the perfect spot so he's got drs in the next corner yeah. i mean like a lewis like Fuck that! I'm not going to pass you now. Yeah, and that's why he back, you know, waited. I mean, race control should tell him, let him buy now. Well, either now immediately or wait until the start finish straight. Yeah, it's you know you can't. Yeah. I mean, like anyone you know could they, see it. I mean, anyone yeah. who has even the vaguest understanding of what's going on, and if race control don't have that, then we're in serious trouble. Yeah. I mean, you know, they got X drivers up there, yeah. they have everything. They should see what's going on. I mean, it's as clear yeah. as daylight. I mean, you know. And, and do you, I wonder if that we're going to see a rule change that they will create a repass zone on the front straight or something in front it, of everybody. It has to be. And, and maybe they can, their DRS is disabled for that lap, you know, when they... It, one or the other, or something that doesn't give the other driver an advantage by letting him by. I mean, it was like, I mean... <laughs> It was obvious. And Max didn't clear him by a he didn't Lewis didn't clear him by a car length. I don't I know there's yeah. not the rules, but he only got to here. Yeah. And Max pissed off again. Yeah, exactly. Crystal ball on who will win. It's impossible. I mean I think unfortunately the way it's escalated the whole thing now. I'm worried. I hope it won't happen, but I'm worried it's gonna be decided in the stewards' room. Yeah, I know. And they're gonna have a you know, somewhere that's gonna fight be it a, all over the yeah, winter. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I, I, it's a shame, you know, that it has to get to that. But again, you know, it's partly the, you know, the fact that they've kind of lost control of the whole situation. I think, and but for me to to avoid all this, they got to revisit how they design these tracks. There's got to be, you know, of course you don't want anyone to get hurt, but there's yeah. got to be a different way to do the runoff. Like you know, the tracks here in America, you know, Mid Ohio, Elkhart Lake. You put a wheel off the off the white line. Well, yeah. you may not be gone, but it, it's enough to slow you down to lose the position. Of oh yeah, yeah. So which is all you yeah, need. Yeah, that's the yeah. that's enough punishment. There's because no, no one's going to do it. Limit punishment. No, exactly. That's no. what I mean. If there was just the slightest punishment, enough to lose, like in the start, half the field is in the freaking runoff area with a foot to the floor. I know. And I mean, so when does the rule apply? Does it apply? All the time, or only sometimes? Yeah, you know, yeah. the, you, you know. Then other tracks, you have a wheel off the white line, the the, yeah. the inside. Then you get punished. So it's like I don't think the drivers. You know, it's just so inconsistent yeah. and so random, and that's they just to avoid all that. I think the best way would just be to fix the tracks. You wouldn't have to yeah. because no one ever worried about that before. Who it sorted itself it? out Who every time. Who designs these tracks, though? Is it? Well, it's, it's always the same sort of guy. Well, Tilke designs the tracks, yeah. but I don't know if he's the one who's in charge of what the runoff should yeah. look like. I mean, yeah, he does. The, I mean, just I think Charlie track. used to sort yeah. of be more involved in that. More involved, but I honestly don't know how yeah. how it works now. But when we're watching it, you go, "I would never put a corner like that in. That looks like the most stupid." Yeah, you know that they. Yeah. I mean, that little there, that one chicane left, right, and you, and you could see 
they were right on the edge yeah. trying to even make the corner. Yeah. Coming down from 200 miles an hour. Yeah, exactly. Um, as, as I think the commentator said, if you go off, you hit something. End of story. You know, look at Mick Schumacher. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, on same Sunday. Leclerc, same corner. Just wild. It's. Do you think you were uh, for our, in Formula One at the right time, minus of course the money? You wouldn't mind the check that they get now, but no, I mean, of course not. <laughs> yeah, quite good. yeah, it was slightly different. Then. <laughs> like, yeah, still was pretty Come good. Up, but three zeros different. But exactly. Yeah, no, quite, but but yeah. they um, it's a different era now for drivers, isn't it? Yeah. Do you look, do you look at it because I know you manage drivers. Mm. You, but I look at it and I, I mean, from like your dad's perspective or or yours, anyone that was in Formula One in those eighties and nineties, I don't know, it was there was it was the end of the analog era, wasn't yeah. it? It was the end of things being not over digitized, you know, yeah. electronic fight or whatever. I mean it was uh, you sort of had a gearbox you had to deal with and I mean it was it was real cars. I yeah, mean, I, mean, it, cars, I mean from a driving perspective, I think it was far more gratifying to drive those cars yeah, than that's a good the word current car. Because there was a lot more, like there's several more layers involved in the skill element, yeah. like just the shifting, yeah. the gear shifting, up and down shift. I mean, I remember I spent days at the factory in Ferrari to actually work on the gearbox myself. You know, the forks inside the so gearbox. You get it just so the you could go from from like second to third because it was you know, yeah, yeah. and we. Because yeah, you always had that kind of, either you miss it or you have to look for it, and it's a tenth of a second or two, you yeah, know, each yeah. time. And with the turbo cars, I mean, the, I mean, you literally couldn't shift quick enough because yeah. it was, you just kept, <laughs> I mean, you just kept feeding yeah. it like that, you know, and then yeah. you were in top gear and then it just yeah. kept going, you know. Magic. But like at Monaco, I mean, you, you know, it was just, I mean, you, so, I, you know, but it made a huge difference. Yeah. You know, on a qualifying lap, the shifting was really what made the lap time. Well. You know, and then on the downshift, you got to get it right so you match the revs, you know, and don't over rev the engine or get so you don't get, yeah. you know, the rears lock up yeah. a little bit. Like if you don't. But that was a skill. That's a skill. Oh, it's a huge the, skill. The, the, yeah. And in the rain. And to is, get the rhythm, you know, yeah. and, and get that flowing, you know, yeah. and everything. It was, it was awesome when you got yeah. it right. You didn't get it right all the time, yeah. obviously, but when you did, you know, and, and also from the racing point of view, I mean, that was often your opportunity people, to get yeah. someone when yeah. you, you kind of stress them. Yeah. You know, you always try to, you know, harass them and, yeah. and then you, know, you see them looking in the mirrors, you know, and, and then eventually, you know, they're making, they, make they, they, miss a, they miss a gear. That was your opportunity was, to pass them. Yeah. I wonder if that's such a good point, Stefan, because the opportunity to do it right was one thing, but the opportunity to do it wrong was also yeah. bigger. Oh, yeah. So, Way bigger. So you, yeah. now, the, other than going off, the guys can't really fuck it, it there's, up. They there's nothing you can No. They you can't. can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. I mean, oh my, your tire pressure is going down. Oh, your yeah. tire's heating up. Oh, I mean, they have yeah. so much data, right? Yeah. But without the ability to force the other guy into a mistake or make his own mistake from yeah. misshifting or something. Yeah. yeah, that's, I haven't really thought about that. I mean, I remember a couple of races, you know, that I just, you know, Suzuka was one of them. I can't remember, I think I was following Burger. And it's just, it's just, could, yeah. So you know, I could see he started looking at yeah. me. So every time I was doing like this, you know, <laughs> and I, he didn't do anything wrong, yeah. you know, and You're I was like, and around. he's like, and I'm doing this, every, and in the end he was like so wound up, you know, that he eventually he missed the gear and I was boom. <laughs> like, you know? hey. and, like, and he goes, like, what, are you, what are you shaking your fist at? I had to kick, I'm trying to get you unbalanced, you know. So. <laughs> Which I always have oh, this yeah. vision of you. Um, when I first, because I first got to know you when you were doing sports cars, I guess yeah. that's when I first got to know you personally. You um, had this vision of you as, as a kid, hair, eyes, fucking teeth. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> yeah. slightly mad, right? Yeah. Ready to go. Which you're not. You're an artist. You're, but you definitely had a fiery side, right? I mean, yeah. You, yeah. You could. Sure. I don't know. It must be the Scandinavian warrior side. I don't know, but. Did you use that to your advantage? I mean, like you just said. You yeah, know. I think so. I mean, weirdly enough, I think a lot of that actually came from ice hockey, strangely enough. Because I used to play a lot of hockey, you know, okay, and I yeah, was yeah. sort of second division. Okay. And because in, in hockey, you're on the ice for one minute, and it's like a 100-meter sprint yeah. for one minute. Yeah. And I think that kind of aggression and that 
actually helps. Suddenly in qualifying, yeah. I think it really helped. You just get into that, you know, and you just yeah. like, you just go full on, you know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. No, because yeah. it is, I, I look at some of the drivers now, the good thing about seeing Max pissed off or Lewis mm. pissed off is it does show a humanity. Yeah. shows a human side. Absolutely. Because we yeah. went for a phase when you're like, God, you guys are so freaking boring. You yeah. Know, someone yeah. punch someone or someone, yeah. you know, do something. Yeah. Um, it's because uh, we're we caught in, they're caught in a really bad trap now, I think. Yeah. So much money, yeah. so many pressures. Yeah. And yet, when you're in the car, as you know, it, all that bullshit goes yeah. away. Absolutely, yeah. Because it's just, yeah. when Max cuts in front of Lewis, in a reaction and cuts across the curb like he doesn't want him to go by, mm. it's the same as a, form, a carter, a kid yeah. in carting doing yeah. right? There's no, it's so instinctive yeah. to, to react. Exactly. Like well, that. that's exactly it. And I think, when, when you right, you can sort of see it really exposes the personality in in a lot of ways yeah, I think yeah. you know just kind of you know how you are yeah but I mean I love I don't think Formula One's ever had a it's a drama like this you know I mean it's almost better than Prost and Senna yeah, I think you yeah. know it's it's fantastic for for F1 and for, obviously for all the fans like us you know yeah. did who was who was the guy in the drivers briefing when you'd sit there. Because I think drivers briefings are this singularly amazing thing that we only experience. Right? Mm, there's no yeah. fans, there's no media, yeah. and you look around, and I always think when you know it was Fangio and Sterling Moss. I remember asking Sterling, he said Fangio's just so cool, you know, mm. uh, but you knew he was confident and he was just the best. And yeah. you know, I think about I've taken pictures before at Le Mans, looking back at the drivers briefing, and you go, God, the best drivers in the world are here. Who was the guy in the drivers briefing that you went? That bastard is, he's the best today. I mean, who was the guy that you were like, he's the best to be up against? Well, in my opinion, it was Prost, you know, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was fantastic, you know, in terms of, I mean, that year I was teammates with him and McLaren. I probably learned more in one year than I did in my whole career before then, you know. Really? Yeah, I mean, he was, just how he managed the whole weekend, if you like, you know, in terms of, I mean, he's, it sort of made me realize that you know the driver is really the CEO of the car. Yeah, he's the boss, and he just manipulate, including Ron. I mean, he just had everybody exactly just doing what he wanted, you know. And he had clear direction; he knew exactly what he wanted, you know. And he just worked everybody, you know. And but in a really nice way, you know. And of course, then he was spectacularly yeah. fast on the racetrack, you know. And his racecraft, you know, but more more than anything, just his feel of the car and how he went about the car. Because we had no computers then; it was yeah. zero data, yeah. nothing. You forget that? Don't no, you? nothing. I mean, so the, whatever, was down whatever. To the engineer saying, you yeah, it was me, or, or well, me. The driver had to tell the engineer what the car mm-hmm. was doing. That was the only information yeah. you had. Yeah. There was nothing, no sensors on the car, no. no data, nothing. So the ability. I mean, you. I remember this. The opportunity to go down the wrong path oh, was yeah. fucking huge, wasn't yeah. it? On oh, setup, yeah. absolutely, because, yeah. And you know yeah. when they go to you, so are you sure you heard that in the gearbox? And you're like, mm. I think, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yes, I mean because they're going to rip it apart before qualifying. Well, I mean like, every little nuance of everything you had to yeah. report. I mean it's like, and I mean I remember the first two or three debriefs with Prost. You know, I mean, it was like my How brain you know was my brain was just fried. You know, but then you sort of start to break it down, you know, and you yeah. understand there's such a method yeah. to it, you know, and it's, he breaks it, you know, it's all chronological. Did he break chronological. the into segments? Not Did so he? much the corner, just more how reporting how the car was feeling, you okay. know, yeah. And, and then all, just how he managed, every, yeah. you know, with everything from the tires to, you know, just, yeah. just everything, yeah, it was, it was great. And, and he was a, I mean, we got along great, you know, yeah. I mean, he, we had a lot of fun together as okay. well that year, you know. So. Because now, if you and I were teammates, we'd be able to, you, I'd be like, so how, why is he faster than me? And I'd go, oh, he's only faster in those three corners, or he's only getting on the go. You, yeah. had, you only had well, I mean, I wish, lap. I wish, you know, because I had, Senna was my teammate in 84, yeah. and, and you Prost, like that uh, data. <laughs> I mean, it'd be fantastic to see data and actually understand, you know, what yeah. they were doing. Imagine but there was that none. would be nice artwork, wouldn't it? Yeah. The data trace between you and it. Yeah, Santa. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like crazy, yeah, you know. Exactly, to, yeah. Yeah, because there's no, I, I remember the first time I did Le Mans in 92, it was in that 962 with Dad and Tiffany Dell. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you, 
I went locked up going around the outside of someone at the end of the mall time. They'd spun on the inside of the corner. So I had to, you know, break and go around them. Yeah. And they go, they can't see it, but you come by, as you finish that lap, they go, did you, um, you know, everything all right? So I lost, you know, a couple of seconds. Yeah. And, and I remember going, yeah, no, that was, it was fine. It was traffic. And then, but the next stint, you know, you lock up and go straight on a bit in the, in the damp and they go, what was that? Just going around the back, just going past someone. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they had no way to know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Honestly. And then you go forward a few years and they're like, why, why are you, uh, you know, they're, they're so on you. Why are you slow on your outlap? Yeah. Why are you slow on your inlap? Oh, yeah. you, now I it's mean, like, you, it's, you, know, you can't. You do? No I remember the first thing, I don't know if you, but like back in the day before all the sort of electronic dash and stuff, the first thing you always did when you do a seat feed was make sure you could reach <laughs> <laughs> the button on the back of the <laughs> rev count <laughs> to, to just reset it if you over rev the engine, you know, so you didn't, a, you didn't get a bollock in when you come in for over revving, you know, exactly, yeah. There's so much. I wonder if all the information is, Yeah. It, I don't know if it's improved the sport, it, does, it doesn't improve the sport from the entertainment side of things. No. I, I don't think so, but I mean, you know. But it's the evolution, look at progress. Yeah, it's, exactly, yeah, yeah. Did you... I mean, coming out of the, in the 70s was so dangerous. The 80s were equally dangerous because, you know, look at where your feet were in the car. Yeah. And did they, had they moved the front feet behind the center line of the wheel by mid eight? No, no, no front, we, huh? we were still sitting on top of the front wheel, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But it's bizarre, you know, because we thought then, we look at the cars from the 70s and like, thank God we didn't drive those things, <laughs> thinking we were uh, super safe, you know, yeah. with a carbon fiber yeah, tub yeah. and, Jeez. you know, yeah, so I mean, you know, it's just, but if you look at, I mean, more than anything back then for me, it was one thing to sit on top of the front wheels, but the way the head was sticking out, like, with yeah. absolutely no neck support yeah. whatsoever. I mean, if you hit sideways, I mean, it'll yeah. just rip your head off the shoulders. Basically. Did you... Yeah. Were you the kind of guy the night before? Were you nervous? Were you scared? Not racing? not scared, but you always have racing nerves. Yeah. I mean, I actually I didn't like it, but I wanted it because you, I always felt I performed better when I had some nerves. But you know, you've got the butterflies before yeah, you totally. get in the car. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And the danger did that get you? No, I mean, it never. Not when it's you're in the middle of it, you know. You don't. I mean, sometimes you think. I mean, you know, I lost a couple of my so mates back fast, then. You know, yeah. Bella De Angelis, yeah. obviously, which is really the reason I started painting. You know, because we were like really, 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 really good friends. Yeah, we spent a lot of time together, and it was a pretty that would really hit me hard. You know, because yeah. I was there trying to get trying to get him out of the car oh, as well. We were testing at Ricard. Yeah. yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty. And, Pretty nasty, you know. That, but that then brought me. I mean, I just wanted to. I don't even know why, honestly, because I had no thoughts of actually painting myself until that point. But went and bought some canvas and some paint and tried to do something in his memory, you know. And so, and that's what got me started. No, no. But I, I, I kind of grew up a little bit with art. My grandfather okay. was a painter, you know. And and then I always started. So when I started making some money in racing, I started collecting a few bits and pieces here mm. and there on travels and so on. Yeah. So I had I'd developed a strong interest in art already, but not to physically yeah. do it myself, you know, at that point. Well, so when DeAngelis, you can't even imagine the stress of what you went through, because it's only happened to a few drivers, David Purley trying mm. to rescue Roger Williams. I mean, it's happened. There was a few of us. There was the myself, few. Alan Jones, Lafitte. I think Prost might have been there too, yeah. This, it was, uh, you know, at the end of the Fast S's at Ricard there. So he just, he rear just, wing he came just went on. in? Yeah, well, rear wing, he just flew off the track basically, landed on the other side of the fence. Were you in the car at the time? Yeah, well, I just went, uh, we sat literally on the pit wall, talking five minutes before, because we just came back from Rio. And of course, so, in testing, you're quite... Yeah, you know, you're quite relaxed, you car, you're laughing quite relaxed. and joking, you know, and then, yeah, it was, um, yeah. So I, I guess how life works, you know, it's, it's I yeah. mean, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you wonder whether those guys like fell off at the peak of mm. brilliance to peak and literally flashes of brilliance, yeah. right? I mean, he was so fast yeah. and gone in a moment. And I follow this an account on Instagram. It's just Stefan Bella for memories. Mm. I don't know how, but I follow it and because they copied dad so, so I think that's why I saw it and you know always putting up pictures of him always putting up yeah. cars and he affected me because I was 
he was young. Yeah. And I was only, I just started racing. So yeah. when he died, and I, I was there that day when he died. And I remember yeah. dad just walking away going, he didn't need to fucking die. Yeah. I mean, he didn't need yeah. to push that hard at yeah. that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I that guess. One it's, moment, you know, it's one. like that. I think probably for most people in their life in the end, it's like one of those pivotal moments. Yeah. You do something or something happens that changes your life, you know, and yeah. for better or worse, of course. Yeah. I. People are always, you know, they say, you know, when you're a driver, you get asked, you know, were you scared or were you, just, and I say, no, because in the moment something's going wrong. When it's going right, you think you're immortal. Mm. When it's, in the moment it's going wrong, you wouldn't know as the driver, we've all had accidents yeah. and you fight them, right? You do what yeah. you do, but there's that weird moment that we'll never hope, well, touch wood, we won't know now Yeah. when you go the other side, right? Right up to the moment th- you fight, you yeah. believe you're going to survive and then you don't. It, it's uh i mean the fear i mean obviously fear i think is a good thing in the end you know you want to have if you don't have i mean there's been a lot of fearless drivers right and yeah. they're not necessarily kill themselves but they tear up a lot of equipment too yeah i know so i mean i think you the fear is for me it's always been kind of a you know i mean you you hit the limit of what you feel comfortable with yeah but as you know you got to go way past that yeah you can't stay in the comfort zone. You got to push way yeah. beyond that yeah. to go fast. To go, I mean, to be really fast. Yeah. But that's, I love that space, that yeah. gray area where you're not a hundred percent sure if the right exactly <laughs> what's going to happen next. You know, but you, you know, when you do it, I mean, that's like that painting I did of Ayrton there. You know, he talks about fear is the same. You know, he's basically saying once you've done it, it's very calm. Yeah, everything just feels very calm, and you're yeah. in control of. You know, yeah. you're on top of it, but. You know, I mean, I've only, I mean, one incident in particular that I always will stay with me was the last race I did at the Indy 500 yeah. in 96, you know, where we, I was in the Penske and the two, that's when Al Jr. and Emerson both didn't qualify. And I knocked Emerson out in the last run yeah, wow. at like three minutes to six on, on, on bubble day. But I had nine attempts until then. And you know, we, we failed every time for various reasons, you know, and then I just pulled it into the line after the last fail and got straight into the line again. Have, you know, and I just told man, you know, just take all the wing up, just completely max. So you took it all on you? Yeah, just, yeah. And, and Tony Batten, I did that, said, no, 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 we can't do that, that no, it's okay, you know, because uh, you're in the twilight zone at yeah. that point, you don't even think like a yeah, human yeah. being, you know, so, so it's, it just do it. You know, and so they look, took like two and a half degrees out. <laughs> and what, normally you go yeah. quarter degree, yeah. maybe half a degree at the time, you know. And I went out, and I, of course you haven't, you know, so I just sort of, you know, you do the two warm up laps and everything. And I, I had put my left foot on top of the Did right you? foot to make really, I was screaming my head off going into turn one on the first, you know, first lap. Yeah. And it stuck and it was really well balanced, you know, so then, yeah. then I knew. Confidence went up. Yeah, well, I mean, then you knew, you know, you, you were in good shape because then, you know, you got to do four laps, so you got to make yeah. sure the balance stays, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it was, and you know, as it turned, it was like the fifth quickest time of the whole month or something. No way. But I remember afterwards, I mean, even on the in lap, I just totally just broke down. Did he? I, I mean, because I pushed myself so far beyond yeah. What a you know yeah well what, what you have in your head is you possible. have your own fresh and literally it took me a week to I mean literally by uh, sort of Thursday the following yeah. week I was sort of I just couldn't function for three days no wow yeah it was crazy but I don't particularly want to do that again no. but it was I mean it's just when you've done it uh, so I can see people that you know mountain climbers and stuff you know the free climbers they just do this, yeah yeah because it's a pretty amazing space to be. <laughs> Do you think that gives you more of an understanding of because we're, you know, I think most of us are physical guys. We do we love racing. It's very visceral, right? Mm. And it's like it's kind of like it's like the way we approach girls' life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yet, Ayrton was, you know, anything you read, any documentary, you know, he said he talks about that spiritual place he mm. used to go to. Yeah. That's where you went. Yeah, right? I think so. I mean, I actually do believe that that's exactly that space, you know, where you kind of on a different 
just on a different level. Yeah. You know, you're just not in a sort of a. It's almost like an out of body experience. Yeah. Almost, you know. It's, it's but. He was able to dial that. He could get that. <laughs> it was in his pocket. mindset yeah. in like almost regularly, yeah. you know, which which is extraordinary. Yeah. I say to like my kids, I talk to my son about you know risk and and everything, and I really believe that if you in our world that we have now, you know, life seems so safe. I mean, mm. the world's a fucking dangerous place, but it's you know most people you you know, the way we drive cars and all the safety and all the regulations. Mm. And I think to myself, I wonder if you imagine what life is like if you've never taken risk, if you've yeah. never felt fear and risk yeah. for your life. I mean, I think that is a, maybe it's a bit of a corny cliche to say you don't, haven't lived unless you've experienced it. No, I, I couldn't don't agree you... with you more. I mean, it's absolutely, you know, I mean, it's interesting because if you look, look at sort of critics or, you know, not saying anything bad about you know journalism or yeah. in general but I think unless you've been in the arena and you sweated it out yeah. and you failed far more times than you succeeded which is always the way it is yeah. right but that one moment when you can feel victory or yeah. you feel yeah. or even if it's not but like this experience I went through yeah. it's, feels it's like something that you, you you can't imagine what it is until yeah. you experienced it yeah. So I would hate to be those, you know, part of that timid souls that's never experienced not a no. victory or defeat, but they just go through life. Yeah. In a kind of a vanilla. Yeah, exactly. Haze. You know, because it's it's something that uh, you know anyone everyone should be able to experience, but yeah. you can't do it unless you push yourself no. to the limit. You know. I don't think you could paint like this if you hadn't had that. You mm. mean it's now? Like, it's like. I know exactly what you're thinking. Uh, that series of paintings with, you know, hangar and yeah. the tunnel. And yeah. I mean, I know that I never drove through Monaco at speed, but I I know what it would feel. I know to impart yeah. what it would feel maybe more than yeah. someone else. And the way that painting curls into the distance, I'm like, yeah. that's exactly what it must be. Yeah. Like. It goes up and away from you, probably doesn't right. it? In the yeah. tunnel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you can draw on that. Yeah. Like, artists need pain. Like musicians need yeah, angst. Absolutely, yeah. I think most yeah. artists have pain, you know, so yeah, you're drawing yeah. on, on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, definitely. Do you, um, it's funny with art, because I was an art student, believe it or not, and it was a crazy story because I went to art college to appease my mum when I wanted to start racing, <laughs> and I found a course in she's just a Bishop Lafayette, Bishop Otter College. It was like related arts. It's mm. like I was. It's like fame. I mean, I yeah. majored in art, but there were dancers and mm. there were actors and musicians. It was, and I took the course because there were like eighty-eight girls on it and twelve boys. Yeah, I, I could see you in the middle of all that in your ballet like, shoes was, and the. I did actually a performance at <laughs> Swan Lake. Don't <laughs> fucking joke. But it was uh, another story for another time. Um, but I, uh, I remember thinking, I really loved that. I had a studio about the garage at Dad's mm. house and. I paint and I loved airbrushing. I mean, yeah. I loved airbrushing at the time. Yeah. It was like big in the 80s, the end of the 80s. Yeah. And um, dad would always be like, come on, cut the grass or something. I'd be like, I'm painting dad. He was like, I'm yeah. sure he thought I was a bit light on my feet, but you know, it was. Yeah. Um, but when I started racing, I actually had to pack all that away. Mm. In, I didn't realize I'd done it, but to, be, to even have a chance of a racing career, yeah. I was too soft. I was yeah. too, my spirit was quite gentle. Yeah. So yeah. I had to, I had to like lock my creative side away mm. for 20 years effectively. Yeah. And, and then it manifested itself in me realizing I need, to, when I started doing TV, I, I like mm. in creating shows and stuff. And then the photography, literally five years ago, I, I did what you've got here. I got in, first of all, I went and bought fucking great canvas, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm back. I'm going to yeah. paint. And I bought all the paints and I said, yeah. okay. I just was like, that was not what my mind was thinking. Yeah, yeah. And I, because that had always been my problem with art. My my imagination was so good and my creativity yeah. was so good, but I'd never quite married it on canvas, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but through photography, I feel I can. Right. Uh, do you think that was a bit like that for you? When you're, when you're trying to be a you know Formula One driver and Le Mans driver, yeah. it doesn't quite balance in the heat of the moment coming back and painting 
flowers, does it? But did you pack it away a bit? I, well, it, racing pulled me away from it all yeah. the time, you know, yeah. whether it was conscious or not, but it was just, yeah. So it was, I did it sporadically through, okay. through the years I raced, you know, but it was really only since I dis finally decided to stop driving five, six years ago now that I really cranked it up, you know, and really got productive and I got this space at the same time. So it all kind of combined, you know, and I think that was kind of the moment to call it a day, you know. Nice. Yeah. Just thinking about the story of the paintbrush. Um, I just said so with the vicar, the priest and your 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 former tenant on the yeah, side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's the kind of photography I should do. Actually, it's a story I can't tell you. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, no, yeah. I'm glad you did though, isn't it? Isn't it? Because I like phases. Yeah. Right. I think life. If you can have phases in life, absolutely. It's, yeah. You are a lucky man. Yeah. And here you are this I way. mean, I, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, to go through life in sort of one dimension or two, you know, but I, I think, I mean, we all have, I mean, I've always had this theory that I think everyone on this planet is born with a natural talent, mm. but virtually no one ever finds out or they don't allow themselves to find out what that is, you know, because yeah. You're passionate about something, but you never, it's always stuff pulling you away from it, mm. or you never allow yourself to pursue it enough to really develop what it is, you know, or mm. what you're good at, you know. And so I think in that regard, I've, you know, I've been extremely lucky because I've never had a job my whole life. Yeah. Really, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been racing cars since I was 16, yeah. you know, and then, then, then I sort of just gradually you know, went into the art, you know, along the way. So, you know, and I'm 65, so hopefully I can keep it going. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think being a, in a way also, doing this is your, is a legacy mm. that is totally singular to you. Mm. Yeah. Whereas racing, we share the stage yeah. with often greater yeah. um, people on their day or, or whatever. Um, but this is your this is this is an amazing legacy that will all be here. You'll always be on Wikipedia, and in the hearts yeah. of Ferrari fans. But really, yeah, this is the only thing that I'm missing in art or any sort of genre like that, as opposed to racing or sport. Is sport you have winners and losers. Yeah, and I like that. Yes, sir. art is the most fussy gray area. I mean, yeah. you can. Put a dog turd there, you know, yeah. with a, something around, and it's a work of art. Yeah. Whereas, in you know, in at least in you know, I don't particularly, I'm not a hundred percent fond of sports that have judges, because yeah. then it becomes somehow subjective yeah, yeah, again, yeah, you know. Yeah. But sport generally is like you got winners and losers, yeah. and there's nothing better than win because you you just it's just no excuses. You you said, you're the first person well, that said well, that. I, I no won. excuses. Okay, but if you. Yeah, I finished second, but you know, I had a slow yeah. puncture or I lost the blah blah blah. There's You're always the five minutes of excuses, yeah. you know. That's exactly what I say. People you say, win and it, end of story. That's, that's it. That's yeah. what I always say to people. Yeah. That is how do you define winning? Yeah. No excuses. Yeah. Exactly. Because and, and yeah. when a winner does start, you're like, yeah. oh, shut up, yeah. mate. Yeah. You, you won, pack it away, you <laughs> exactly. don't need to talk about it, yeah. but you're at second place, it's like yeah. so much shit you can come out of your mouth. I hate it. <laughs> but it is, and again, you know, the, the being in an environment where you, where you, all you do is have the, uh, the simplicity of winning or losing, which mm. is, I think is the purest thing that yeah, absolutely. humankind uh, can totally, experience. Totally, absolutely, you know? I, I, yeah, 100%. That's what's so great with sport, you know, it's really, uh, and it brings out the best and the worst yeah, in all of us, know. you know. Yeah. Do you, uh, I, I often think, you know, it's like, it, for me with, with what I do in, uh, in you know, my TV stuff, you know, I think I'm okay at it and good at it, but I remember when I was racing, this was my difference, uh, is I never sat there in that driver's briefing going, I'm better than all these. Bastards. I, yeah. really, I never did. Like, so it was Mika Hacken was over my first year racing at Alan McNeish. I mean, they weren't who they are now, but you know, yeah. I finished third a lot, right? You know, yeah. they were really good. But I remember I never had that. My drawback was I never had that innate confidence. Yeah. I just never, never quite did. In the race, I was feeling great. You yeah. know, I'd always be good in the race. 
what for you was the moment in your career where you just you felt on totally an equal footing to anyone when you were like i'm actually as good as any anyone in the world yeah i try i thought about that actually i don't know what that defining moment was exactly but um but you're 100 percent. i mean confidence is everything in racing yeah. you know, or thinking any sport you do you know uh, it, it just makes it yeah. just Take, takes you to a another winner level. becomes a winner. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it just it really depends on how you think. You know, if you think like a winner, you you will become a winner. You know, it's really uh, the way it is. You know, but I think I think it really when it really clicked for me was probably it was probably the first race I did with Tolman in Monza when I was on a you know a decent car yeah. and we almost stalled on the start line. I qualified quite well, six, seven, something, eight, something like that. And so I went, you know, dead last and yeah. drove up to fourth, you know, and passed all the sort of the, the big, big guys yeah, along yeah. the way, you know, then I wrote, you know, I think I can probably get the job done here. Yes. You know, I felt, felt like I was as good as anyone, you know, yeah. Was your dad, when his, did he pass away? Was he yeah, dead? he passed a few years ago, yeah. What was, I always think that for athletes, because that person that helped them, that moment in that tournament or when you got the Ferrari contract, you know you made him mm. so extraordinarily proud that day, right? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Because you can't do it without your parents, as no. you said, but what a, so many kids never get, their parents support them and they never get that moment, yeah. right? To taste the champagne. Yeah. And it's, it's like the ultimate payback, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, no, I mean, he obviously, you know, it was like his, I mean, I think for a lot of parents, you know, that support their kids in sport, it's an extension of themselves, of course, yeah, you know. Totally. And he was a club racer, you know, but obviously never had the opportunity or the ambitions to, yeah. you know, make it further than that. So for him, obviously, it was um, extremely proud. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, definitely, yeah. The other thing that I think about with uh, you is, not just you, I think there was something quite Racing was very visceral. Racing was very honest in its way. There was there was always politics. It was a simpler time in a way. No social media. Mm. No, you could go off around the world and do whatever you wanted. Yeah. No one knew, right? Yeah, and yeah. Like exactly. These drives now, Lewis can't yeah. walk in. No, he's he could, that I don't envy. Yeah. Right? They can't. I mean, I'm sure they're still young guys. They, there was a. They still have fun. I mean, yeah. There was a thing. I think I mean, Max and Lewis at a press conference a few weeks ago, and they're like, "Did you see how many?" Girls are where Lewis is, and Max is like, "Well, I have a girlfriend." Lewis is, "Oh, forget it then." You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. But that I I grew up as a you know with my dad, who was obviously quite a quite a healthy boy in his own way. Yeah. You know? And so I grew up around dad and Jackie and York and Mass and seeing all yeah, these yeah. guys and yeah. then you a bit of it was it's a it was a bit like rock and roll, wasn't it? There was, I mean, girls love racing drivers. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's any different now. But I mean, frankly, and you know, and I mean, of course, it's always there. But it's really more there, I think, on the fringes, not necessarily in the middle of where. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even back then when I was racing, I mean, you were pretty much occupied with the team yeah. till ten o'clock at night. I know. At Everyone every you you're with the engineers, yeah. you know, and you go through. Just, you know, and, and yeah. so it was, I mean, I, I think it's kind of been the same, you know, yeah. mo most of the glamorous part that you see is for the public. It's yeah. not necessarily for the people yeah, inside yeah, yeah, the yeah. business, you know. Yeah. I think you're right. We, it's, it's there, but my buddy James used to come to my races and he, he'd be like, oh, I'm going out tonight. I said, it's Saturday night. I've got to go. He said, you've got to go to bed, mm. you know, whereas he'd be out. Yeah. I said, as long as you line something up for tomorrow night yeah. for me, you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I look at all the pictures of the, the pit lane and, you know, that's sort of one of the time stamps, you look at photographs in the 60s and 70s, yeah. the girls looked so beautiful, didn't yeah. they? They're yeah. so, so French movie star yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's funny when you just look through the decades. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I always think to myself that, um, all around the world, there's, there's sort of this army of, of grandmas that, you know, 
knew some really famous racing drivers oh, back yeah. in the day. Can you imagine? I bet, that? yeah. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. What a yeah. world. Seeing yeah. it all. So what's next for you then? Just keep painting? Well, I mean, you know, obviously I'm still heavily involved in motor racing too, yeah, although right. I'm not driving. You know, I manage Scott and Felix and a few other drivers, you know, and then I mean, still working with Ferrari quite a lot, yeah. you know, on, on the, the GT program, and uh, and then uh, you know more and more focus on the paintings now. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm st it's starting to kind of move. You know, it's like anything. I mean, this is yeah. a, like starting in Formula Ford and racing again. You know, exactly. and trying to have a new career. You know, yeah, so yeah. but I felt I feel pretty good about it. You know, I mean, I'm not the best person in the world to market myself. So mm. you know, and I kind of sometimes just lock myself in here and just kind of get on with my work, you know, yeah. but I got to go out and, and I've been out there a lot more now, sort of, you know, just mingling with, with the art and everything. And, and like anything you do, you know, the more you promote yourself, the, the more, more so there, there are some, some cool things happening now, you know, so yeah, and yeah I just I keep doing my, my work, you know, and I mean, I sell pretty good as it is, you know, um, just people coming to the studio and visit and so and, cool. Yeah. Before we finish, what do you say to young boys or girls that come up and want to be race drivers, especially as you manage them? Yeah. What, what do you, what do you, what's your advice to them? Well, I mean, I don't normally get involved until they're at, no, at a certain know. level, but, you know, but, but I mean, I, the one yeah. thing, I mean, you know, that, that I sort of try to tell all of them is that, you know, just be brutally honest with yourself and understand, you know, just to have a serious conversation with yourself and understand how good are you really, you yeah, know, and if yeah, you 100% yeah. believe in yourself, then just never give up because yeah. you never know when the opportunity is going to come. So yeah. Just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, never give up, you know, and eventually if you're good enough, I still believe that you can crack it, you know. Well, yeah, it's cool, mate. Thanks yeah. very much. Glad we did this. Yeah, I know. Love it. Love good it. Chance. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a picture. Yeah. All right. Cool.